Hello everybody. This is the second topic of the first lecture. We will be studying various classes of logic. So logic is a broad topic and it can be subdivided into various subclasses such that we can un understand it in a step by step manner and no not get overwhelmed with the, uh, all the complexity. So uh, typically logic is uh, uh, divided into subclasses with increasing complexity in the following four classes. Okay? Uh, there's a first you have a proposition logic which is fairly simple and then added difficulty is uh, added in, in various logics for example first order logic you have have quantifiers introduced and the complexity increases in this direction let's look at what is proposition logic in the proposition logic we deal with propositions and it infers from the structure over the proposition it's very important to notice this structure over the propositions and the furthermore there's another important point is that it does not look inside the proposition it does not care what those propositions themselves are as long as their connection makes sense you say this reasoning is valid or this is not valid and this is very powerful class of uh, logic and uh, it can help you solve problems like solving sudoku playing chess and things like that. so let's click at an example consider the following argument if the seed catalog is correct then if seeds are planted in april then the flowers bloom in july the flowers do not bloom in july therefore if seeds are planted in april then the seed catalog is not correct do you think this uh, argument is correct or not? Please pause the video and uh, uh, try to reason yourself. Is it valid or not? Assume you have done it, uh, analyze the argument and let's see how should you go about reasoning it's a valid argument or not in a, in a formal mathematical way. First look what this, uh, uh, this uh, there are certain propositions are involved. Okay, so let's break it down this argument in in the proposition and let me highlight them okay once you highlight them you see there are three propositions okay first proposition is seed catalog is correct second proposition is saying the the seed are planted in general april and the third proposition is this one the uh, the the flower blooms in july uh, others you see that either negation for example this one is negation of the third proposition and uh, and all the propositions are repeating themselves in late. Okay, this is a repeat, and this is again a negation of the some proposition. Well, what we can do is since we know that only three propositions are involved, we can replace them by symbols. So, for example, I replace the first proposition by C, second one by S, and the last one by F. If I do that, I will obtain the following argument. What does it say? If C, then if S, then F not f therefore if s not c so just for just for your comfort let me see let me show you this not c is basically matched to this piece of text okay and now now anybody can see i hope you can see that this argument holds true and we will see why why when why, 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 one might think but important thing to note is what these in propositions mean is irrelevant this argument holds true irrespective of the meaning of these three symbols and so you can just symbolize an argument and then ask the question is it a valid reason or not of course this is quite useful class of uh, uh, logic and widely used in in solving various problems now let's look at a slightly more complicated class of logic that is called first order logic in the first order logic you now you start looking inside the propositions not arbitrarily detail but it's somewhat detail and it will become clear soon it's far more expressive and it includes parameterized propositions means earlier you have propositions now you have a parameterized proposition and also you can quantify it over individuals 
and this restriction is important the quantification is arbit is not uh, is not arbitrary it you can only talk about quantify over individuals so it will become clear eventually and since you have added extra power power of quantifiers power of propositions parameterized propositions and therefore now you can inter, uh, inter, uh, express a lot of interesting math in this logic for, uh, let's me again give you an example of, of a first order logic. We have seen this argument before. Uh, hu humans are mortal. Socrates is a human. Therefore, Socrates is a mortal. Okay. Now, if we say this argument, how do we know it's correct or not? So, as we did the previous way, we try to symbolize it. Now, if you try to symbolize it, 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 it will take a slightly complicated symbolizing process. And it will look like this okay so again we have propositions but the propositions now we have is with parameters this guy is a parameter x is a human is a proposition with a special symbol x which we call parameter and it will show up in the symbolic form i will say h of x similarly x is mortal it symbolizes m of x and we can also symbolize the individuals in our system Okay, we can say so we will use symbol S to represent Socrates. The first sentence says humans are mortal, which we can translate into for all individuals X. If X is human, then we can conclude X is mortal. The second statement is this guy. Okay, we say Socrates is a human. How do I say in my logical form? I give X to H, which has which takes one parameter. And it returns true. Okay, therefore, I know that this this fact holds. Okay, now the within the argument, I see therefore m of s. Okay, same process. I put s in the place of x. Okay, now I have this argument, and any uh, person who has a, some sense of reasoning can see that this is a valid argument. It is not important that what this word is or that word is okay but important is that this proposition h of x has one parameter appears somewhere in this this proposition okay that's all that is relevant for this kind of reasoning and this is called first order logic fl is not the most general logic actually you can create you arbitrarily complex logics and uh, there are arguments which are relevant in mathematics cannot be expressed in FOL. The still FOL is a is a, is is a very limited logic. Okay? So even though it's limited, but FOL can be enriched by theories. What do I mean by theories? Okay? Uh, earlier we had this propositions which is you know uh, x is human, but what is human? We didn't understand at all. What is the meaning of being human? But in mathematics, we use symbols, for example, here 0, 1, this guy, plus addition, less than, and uh, we know what do they mean. And uh, we cannot just put them in, in, a, in a first order logic and the logic interprets them as their mathematical meaning. To tell logic what their meaning is, you add axioms. Okay. So one of, for example, you, you basically can tell that for all x, y, uh, if x plus y equals to y plus x, okay, this can be an axiom or addition which says that addition is commutative. So this kind of axioms you need to add in your reasoning system such that it can your logic can interpret the your your state arguments co correctly. Okay, let me give you an example. Okay, uh, look at this formula. You may pause the video and uh, try to uh, interpret the sentence correctly uh, with the mathematical meaning of greater than sign and the multiplication sign. So I hope you try to analyze this uh, this this formula. Let's try to analyze uh, together. Okay. So it look at this formula. Okay. In this formula, p is a free variable. Okay. There is no quantification over p. You see, for all v1, 
all numbers v1 v2 if v1 v2 are greater than 1 their multiplication is, is not equal to p therefore what does it say p is a prime okay if this guy is saying p is a prime then what this part is saying this part is saying for some p which is bigger than x and that is prime okay so the basically uh, this uh, this whole proposition is saying there are arbitrarily large prime numbers so if you want to make a, such a statement you can translate into the logical form so let me emphasize that in our earlier example predicates didn't have any meaning x is human we don't know what the human is but in the case of with uh, predicate a first order logic with the theories we have a sense of meaning attached to this this symbols like less than or plus okay and which enriches the uh, the logic and you may be able to say lot many more things and in uh, represent lot many more arguments okay so we will see how how theories work with first order logic now get in a, another level of complexity this is i would say most complex form you can think of a logic uh, so that's called higher order logic Okay, so now you can quantify over anything. Okay, so what is the other thing which were allowed? earlier I said now you can quantify over only individuals. Now you can quantify over anything. What are the other things out there you can quantify about? You can quantify over predicates. You can say for all predicates, for all predicates, for all x, either x is true on P or not true i mean this is maybe a tautology statement or maybe not you have to think about it but important thing to note is that you are being p you have a quantifier not over x but over a predicate which takes another thing as a parameter okay this makes the whole reasoning process far more complex and difficult and therefore this formula is is belongs to second order logic not first order logic. Okay. And similarly, you can define third order logic and fourth order logic and so on. So this is a sort of hierarchy we will play with. And in this course, first we, are, we will look at the proposition logic study and then first order logic and then theory, then how, if time permits, higher order logic.